Hello everybody, it's Will from Hitmarker here and I'm teaming up with the British Esports Association today to talk to you about some of the most common job sectors that we have here in esports and what you should be expecting from all of those opportunities. And of course, that doesn't mean that every single job is going to fall into one of these categories and not every single job within those categories is going to perfectly match up with what we say here because it's a very varied industry. But we want to give you a general idea of what kind of things you'll probably be doing and what kind of skills that you should be looking at developing right now if you want to start landing one of those roles. We've got six sectors to talk about today. So let's dive in. Let's start with business development and sales. Now this is an area that we are seeing explode in terms of the number of jobs in the esports industry that provide this, that go into the business development, sales, partnerships is another common term for roles in this area. And it's all about selling a product, whether that product be something physical, mice, keyboards, whatever, whether it's selling a service, whether it's selling partnerships at events or partnerships for teams, it's all about being able to talk to people, network, get involved in that kind of side of things and make sure that you're able to close the deal, that you're someone who's confident in potentially cold calling and emailing people who you don't necessarily um, usually associate with. You have to, as we've said, be super confident in this kind of role and not be afraid of rejection because when you're cold calling, when you're cold emailing, when you're going into meetings and trying to set things up, there's not going to be a 100% success rate and you are going to have to deal with some pushback potentially or just being ghosted by people on the other side. One of the best things that you can do going into an entry or junior level business development or sales role in esports is already have a network of esports people that you've communicated with, that you've worked with in the past, that you have a good relationship with. Because a lot of these companies will be hiring in and they'll want you to hit the ground running. And if you've already got a couple of potential clients in your pocketbook that you can contact and talk to about your new service, the new product that you're brought in to sell, then you're going to be off to a winning start already. Editing and writing is something that we see quite a lot in terms of journalism, but also in the wider esports realm as well, including copywriting, um, being able to write articles not only about news and what's happening in esports, but advice side stuff as well. And it goes without saying that your writing skills are super, super important in this area. You need to be fluent in the language you're writing in, you need to have a good understanding of grammar, you need to be able to edit your own work, and you need to be having a writing style which gets to what's important and is very clear while also not being super spartan and just sentence, sentence, sentence. You need to have a little bit of style as well, especially if you're going for a couple of those higher journalism or creative roles which are going to take a little bit more flourish in your writing style. It's not just about the writing on its own. You need to be understanding a little bit about how to research, whether you're a journalist and you're going out and finding sources, talking to people, going online and finding things about that, or you're writing the more advice side things where you're going to have to go in and do research online, do research in different places because you don't necessarily fully understand the topic that you're needing to write advice about. And having a general understanding of the full life process of a written piece from inception to being released and how that's marketed is going to help you a great deal. A lot of writing roles ask about stuff like SEO and having a little bit of an understanding of social media as well, as well as some more general marketing and of course editorial and networking skills to work with other people, get feedback, meet new sources, maintain your sources. That's all going to be massively helpful. Event production, something that's coming back more and more because Last couple of years, events have had to shift quite dramatically. They've had to go mainly online or they've been cancelled because of the state of the world in 2020 and 2021. But in-person events are coming back and a lot of companies are deciding that online events are the place to be. So they're looking for people to come in and bring some value to that situation. Being an event producer or an event manager is not just about being on the ground at the event and making sure that everything is good, that you've got a good speaker, that you've got good teams playing at your tournament, that there's a good prize pool. It's not just about that. It's a very heavy logistics role, especially if you're doing in-person stuff, because you need to work out not only how are people going to, who's going to be there, and how you're attracting people to the event, but also what's happening at the event. What are the timings? What are the materials you need? What are the other people that you need to consider? Are there safety issues? You need to have that good logistic mind, a good administrative mind, and you need to be very, very clear on keeping notes, being able to communicate stuff efficiently, and making sure that everything is on time, safe, and will fit the bill. Not only do you need to understand partnership and sales a little bit to get the good presenters and the good people who are going to make your event happen, but you also need to understand marketing, community management, social media, in order to develop and bring in 
people to the event, right? You want to have people watching your games or attending your talks or networking at your networking event. And if you don't have a bit of savvy in the marketing world or in the, um, the social media world, you're gonna to struggle to bring those people in as effectively. And of course, you're probably not gonna be expected to know every single thing about every single one of these areas, but being a good project manager and being able to organize and develop these people, as well as making sure that all their jobs are being done correctly and at the right time and in a way that you'd be happy with, is going to be a massive task for you as well. Marketing is all about making people aware that your product exists. It's not necessarily about selling the product, but you want to be getting the product in front of as many people as possible. And it's a very interesting opportunity and a very interesting type of job because it intersects from the creative. You need to be thinking about cool products and you need to be thinking about how you would want to see stuff and how you can bring in the esports audience, especially in esports roles, where it's quite a young audience. They're looking for different kinds of things to the traditional audience. But also you want to be bringing in people who maybe aren't as interested in esports and gaming because you want to be hitting new targets. You want to be increasing your customer base or you want to be increasing on people who see your product because that's what marketing is. But not only can you can't just be a creative, you also have to be someone who understands the admin and the logistics and the technical side of things. There's a lot of data that goes into marketing. You need to be able to understand where you should be posting stuff at what time, in what way, and you need to have the data to back it up. You need to have the understanding to say, this is why we're doing this at this time, because you can make the best thing ever, but if it's not being utilized in the right way in your marketing strategy, then it's a little bit pointless. And you can have the best data set in the world, but if you're not putting out creative, interesting content, people are just gonna scroll on by or just skip your ad. And leading on from that, social media is kind of a facet of marketing, but I thought it was worth giving it its own spot. You still need to have that creative mind. You still need to have a data-driven mind because Social media is such a powerful tool. It gives you so many different analytics that you can be utilizing and using and learning from. The best piece of advice I can give you right now is to go away and learn about what kind of software social media managers are using in esports and get to grips with it, get an understanding with it. Because companies will come in and they'll say, we're gonna be using this, this, and this. And if you can say, I've already used this, this, and this, even if it's just on a personal level, being able to have those conversations in the application process are gonna show the company that you're competent because you thought about this stuff and you've got a little bit of experience. Something else to consider with social media, again, having a different set of skills rather than just being able to write a funny tweet is gonna be super important. So we're talking about if you can learn a bit about graphic design or video editing, you might want to make something very quickly on the fly. And if your graphic design isn't available, that might fall on you if you want to hit the immediate, this is where we're gonna get our views, this is where this social media post is gonna pop and you're the only person who's gonna have the time to make that graphic. And again, being a good writer is also going to be super important, especially where you've got limited words to convey your message. You need to understand how to cut, how to structure sentences and marketing copy correctly, how to use stuff like SEO and hashtags in order to bring eyes to your post. And the last one we're gonna talk about in esports, and this is the most esports specific one, is being talent, being a caster, being a host, being an interviewer on broadcasts. Now, this is something that a lot of people really love the idea of doing, and it's a very, very popular sector with candidates, but you've got to remember that there aren't gonna be a million different well-paid jobs in this area. If you're looking to be a, a full-time caster, most of the jobs are freelance because it gives you the talent flexibility and it gives the company the ability to not pay these quite high salaries to people who aren't necessarily gonna be utilized 12 months of the year. If you wanna be considering what you could be improving and what you could be learning in order to gain these opportunities if you're newer, yes, being very good in front of camera, yes, having a good voice and being able to talk for the game that you're gonna be casting over if you're a caster or hosting a desk if you're gonna be hosting at a desk, that is super crucial and that is what's going to keep getting you callbacks, keep getting you jobs. Being a good networker is what opens the doors in a lot of cases. So being able to meet new people, give a good impression is gonna help you open doors and it's gonna help you get into those positions and that's when your ability is gonna start talking more and more because if you get into a job and you're really, really great, they're gonna to wanna to keep you around, they're going to want to recommend you, they're going to want to promote you to the next level. You need to be researching the games that you're going into, not only the teams and the players that you're going to be watching, but the general game itself. You need to have your finger on the pulse of what's going on, what's good, what's bad, what's different. And you need to be very, very good and aggressive at taking feedback. You need to be able to say, I see why this is wrong. I'm going to fix it before the next broadcast. Because people who don't evolve and don't adapt in a very competitive industry are going to struggle to keep up and they might fall behind. And if you fall behind when there's 20 people looking for one job, that's going to be a bad time for you.
But those are some of the most common uh, jobs in esports that we've seen over the past couple of years. And hopefully that has given you an idea of what to expect, some of the skills that you might not have necessarily considered and how you can go about developing them right now in order to make yourself a more attractive candidate to companies, whether you're applying for jobs right now or you're considering applying in the next couple of years, maybe after education or after you've gained a little bit of experience elsewhere. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.